Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. I'm going to do this series uh, as I do these uh, E7WC fights, uh, hoping that these videos will be helpful for those who are, you know, wanting to get a grasp on uh, RTA drafting. So I kind of want to make these as like a mini commentary with RTA drafting guide in general. I learned a lot from Elvmage during the uh, tournament and uh, as well as just cleaning out the season, uh, resolution season that is, and uh, I feel like really uh, in the right mindset. Um, most of my drafting is uh, getting more and more solid, the thinking process. Uh, first things first, let's talk about the pre-bans. Um, I've been pre-banning Bellion because I've been cleaving now, Ran, Pavel Cleave. He banned Ran, so that uh, gives me no option. He picked AOL first, so that means C. Lilius is honestly the strongest first pick. Um, Para would be okay, like for uh, for his side, but uh, C. Lilius is one of the strongest picks. Um, I picked A. Robbie as the anchor, and he picked his Hua Yang as the anchor. So in your regular draft, I would say this is a standard draft at the moment, both sides. Um, you probably want to have an anchor DPS, and that being Hua Yang and A. Robbie. Literally, those two right now serve that role. Uh, carry DPS means that they have their own innate survival and they just do a lot um, to either in A. Robbie's case survive and bring back heroes and in Hua Yang's case survive and kill off heroes. Uh, AOL DN combo is pretty strong um, but in my opinion it's not as strong as something like a hand guy C. Lilius. Um, we're always trying to we're always trying to aim to counter draft all the way to the last pick and so therefore you can just ban the last pick. If you are drafting with the mindset of like oh I gotta ban the AOL, I gotta ban the Hua Young, gotta ban the DN, most likely the last pick if selected properly on the opponent side, you will lose the draft. So you ideally want to have a counter draft for everything. Uh in this uh, in this preseason, my A Robby is actually on proof of valor. Uh, because I'm cleaving now, that means Hua Yang is not my pre-bans anymore. Uh, that means A. Robbie needs Proof of Valor. So right now, his last pick is pretty good, um, but I can see a flaw in his pick, right? So he's not really counter-drafting, at least his AOL first pick was not a counter-draft. That's what makes uh, AOL first pick not as strong as something like a C. Lilius. Um, it's, it's neutral, but it's not good enough because realistically, if you single target um, and then you have a, a Spectany A. Ravi, that makes the AOL not a good pick on his side. Um, so here, realistically, the DN is the ban because she brings the attack buff. And if I have ML Kauric, I have high kill potential with cleanse because the carrot and the AOL. But uh, if you leave C. Lilius in, I have attack down. So we both opted to take out the attack buffer, but I have a much stronger uh, support in C. Lilius over his Angel of Light because Angel of Light doesn't do what C. Lilius does. C. Lilius still brings that uh, the defense buff and the attack buff and the vigor. And the attack down here is triple threat on uh, three of his DPS here. So uh, C. Lilius first pick is super strong, uh, even though I first pick A. Robbie. He is on twin souls here, twin toggle holes, so he has uh, 40 souls. I didn't attack down a landy, but having the uh, redirected provoke land was big. Because he only really has one way to kill my Spectenny here, um, and that is really the carrot now. If landy was... Uh, and, and also the, the harmonization of landy with AOL is not st super strong here. Um, he could have not picked landy because I would technically never pick Landy in his AOL. And like I said, if you're always banning to like, uh, you're drafting to ban last, then I would never pick Landy because he first picked AOL. Throughout this series, I will be talking about like similar concepts over and over. So um, if you missed that or you need the context, Either scroll back to the video to look at the draft again, or uh, or just keep watching the series. That dual attack there is actually really lucky on his side, um, because uh, Huayong Zubiri's Tooth kind of skips the damage mitigation that I have as the uh, elemental advantage on the Aria that is. Although here it doesn't really matter, 
Um, I've pretty much won the draft. Uh, my spec tenny has been changed and modified to uh, destruction set, much higher bulk, 11,000 HP as you see there and 1300 defense. With the vigor buff, it was really good, and then the attack down, he really didn't have the the punch to pen penetrate the uh, the team here. Uh, it is lifesteal Aria, and actually funny thing is that this is the first time I drafted Aria. Um, in my uh, account showcase, I said that I never drafted her because I pre banned Huayang during the resolution season. But then now that I don't pre banned Huayang, uh, Aria is a good play again. Although I didn't really get to use Aria <laughs> to her full potential here because she was silenced by AOL. But it was the last pick that, uh, in my opinion, was proper. Um, because realistically, he was kind of stuck. He either had to ban the Aria or had to ban the uh, Hand Guy or C Lilius. Um, and that's what you don't want to trap yourself in. You don't want to aim to ban something in between, which I think he, how he drafted, he did. I think he yields here, if I remember correctly. And then on to the second round. So because uh, I think he was first pick or I am first pick, yeah. So now he's he swapped to himself. Uh, I think I was first pick. Remember, Ran is banned, and uh, generally I'm uh, I'm actually pre banning to cleave now. Uh, you guys will see it in the other videos when Ran isn't banned. I'll I'll be cleaving. <laughs> cleaving is really fun. The end first pick is okay. Um, the end first pick, in my opinion, is very vulnerable to stuff like Landy early and Politus. Um, assuming that, because Bellion is banned, right? So when you're pre banning and when you're drafting and looking at what they pick, you have to also think about all the meta heroes that cannot be used since a hero is drafted. Like I said, don't plan to pre ban the DN. You want to. You want to start counter drafting sequentially. So, for example, him choosing a Spectenny into my Landy is not smart at all. Um, Spectenny is very weak into Landy if we're giving a one on one scenario since uh, Landy's on Guiding Light and then he chooses to choose another single target into Landy. Not a good play. So, in terms of like um, his draft, he I don't know what he's planning to ban here. I feel like he's just stealing all the quote unquote the op heroes um but if you have a full roster built and you know the meta pretty well there's way to counter draft and punish that that kind of drafting method um and i definitely i would i would say that i learned from the best to not draft that way So the Cecilia, uh Cecilia is good uh with my landy with my Pera. And of course, the surprise would be the end. I'm already thinking about a Politus pick here. Like I said, DN is not super strong into something like a Landy and a Politus, so I'm already trying to seal the deal. His Bassar pick was actually an empty pick. He would have to have a double debuffer, like if if Angel of Light was available, double debuffer like Angel of Light Bassar for me to be in trouble for picking the Para. So he can't really punish it, or at least maybe he doesn't know how to punish it. Um, his last pick here will actually punish him. That makes it super easy for me because Politus now enables Caesarea and I can just ban the Basar. Because now he has two cleansers that would trigger Politus, which is honestly, I it was, it was technically really, really good. So I'm not even thinking about banning the Huayang here because there's no way to lose. Um, because I have Landy, I have Peira, I have Caesarea, I have Politus. So in terms of the drafting, um, I think his only counter draft was the Basar, and then he's thinking, okay, if he gets rid of my CR booster, I still need another one to pop his DPS. But keep in mind that, you know, I had Peyra, I had Caesarea, I had Politus, like, what, what, what would he do, right, in that draft? I would say this, I, I did get a bit lucky here, although the Politus was still always there. I did get a bit lucky, I had an RNL proc right there, as you saw there. And uh, even though that Amelia was on Bastion and I saw the proc, uh, there was hardly any reason for me not to use it on Amelia, so the S1. I didn't even bother soul burning it, but, but because like if you look at the speed tuning, what is he going to do, right? So if he does any non-attack skill, Paul just cuts him and then he can't win. So it, it didn't matter what I I did there with that RNL. Um, I, I was actually surprised it landed on the Amelia because it was on Bastion. 
uh, of hope, so the uh, ER artifact. And of course, Politus is full damage. Um, uh, since since now I'm trying to cleave, Politus needs to be full damage. And that was pretty. That was pretty much it for this fight. Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, a second fight. Uh, as I continue down to commentary, I'll most likely make these videos as like a two-parter. So every every daily, the my two battles, I'll commentate on it. So this uh, Necro, uh, I actually knew him. Um, he he used to be a, a member in my community a long time ago. I think he left uh, quite a long time ago. Um, but I remember him. Um, I'm, I'm usually I usually remember. I usually remember people's names. So anyways, so I, I try to cleave him. Um, so Bellion banned. He banned AOL, which is good for me because it does open up some cleave options. So he goes Sea Lilius first pick. It's very, very strong. But in my opinion, unless the Sea Lilius is 310 or higher than 310, it is susceptible to Rand cleave. So again, is this kind of procedural drafting where assuming people are built a certain way okay not not saying like the super whale build or you know like the 320c lilius assuming that sequentially speaking uh ran cleave out trumps a c lilius but c lilius out trumps anything else so here he is securing uh anti-cleave team pretty early um this makes it slightly more difficult for me since uh elena is not super strong if i had gotten politis um, if I had gotten Politus and Ran together and a Pavel, then Elena's not a really strong anti-pick, but then he picked Politus, so that limits my options for sure. So at this point, I'm thinking, do I pivot? So I'm also, uh, I would say I'm pretty confident with my standard, uh, standard drafting now, so I, I, I don't usually mind trying to cleave or brute force a cleave in round one, at least in the E7 World Cup mode. Or world champion mode, world cup, uh, E7WC. Uh, I actually kind of like this format. I I kind of this is a separate commentary. I like this format because it gives you an opportunity to learn from your opponent and then to punish them on the subsequent rounds. So the best out of three is a pretty good format. I don't like overall how this is the lead up to the tournament though. Um, it, if there is a uh, unlimited entry cap, like there's no entry cap basically. I, I think that this mode to be premium, they should have limited the entries and allowed the regular season RTA or regular ladder to be unlimited entry if people are complaining like, oh, we want more games or whatever, right? Um, I just think that the quality of players at the end may be, may be influenced by how much time a player has over how good they are as a player, you know what I mean? Um, but that's a side commentary. Either way, back to the draft. So he has RB, he has FCC. Now this is a very solid anti-cleave draft, at least versus my team. There's no way I win this at all. Um, it doesn't matter what I last pick. His All his picks are too good into this team. I think there, were, there was a play or two. I may have gotten an opportunity, but you guys will see something that would be uh, considered quite scuffed. Um, realistically, he has only one DPS. Um, Cause, cause if he leaves a Ravi, he only really has one DPS, and that is, uh, that is RB. Um, I have to ban. I think I do ban this FCC. I have to ban FCC here, um, because it's clear that he ha he's leaving the Pavel in. If his last pick is FCC, unless he's baiting the ban, it had to be Pavel. So, uh, Pavel had to be in. I think he takes out Ran. Oh, he takes out a Ravi, yeah, which is the right ban. So this one was pretty tough. So I think there could have been a win condition, if. I kill the RB. So I didn't kill the RB. So there's nothing I could do here, right? So if I did uh, S3, if I did S2, Politus goes up, probably kills my C Dom. If I did the S uh, S3, the Elena would proc and I would not be able to stop her because I needed the source for my Pavel. So only having one soul holder here probably was the kill. And I didn't kill the RB. So that was one issue. I thought that there may have been an opportunity for me to kill the RB with like a Rimru if he had tanked it. So right here I'm looking at pushing up my Rimru because the Politus was on immunity. So I wanted to take the risk here to get the Politus proc'd and then 
potentially kill her off with the Rimuru. So we got a 50-50 shot here. It was apparently on Abyssal Crown, and I do miss, so unfortunate. Um, so obviously I don't make the cut. Uh, even though we can kill her, uh, the Politis immunity steal was only one turn. So no matter what here, I, I would have lost. But I accepted it. I think that uh, this set, um, this player was really well prepared to uh, to anti cleave, um, and it is definitely harder I think to cleave round one because you only have one ban. But like I said, I'm, I'm quite confident in uh, in my uh, standard drafting that uh, I'm, I'm okay to try cleaving in round one, so that to be quicker, to have fun, to get that rush, you know. <laughs> the adrenaline from cleaving uh but the uh the second the second round i'm just like okay well obviously you know he he can anti-cleave even if, I, even if i started banning off uh certain heroes um he definitely has the knowledge to counter cleave so i didn't want to even bother so right now i'm just thinking about um because i have first pick i'm just thinking about what is the direction i want to go like who who is my first pick do i want to see lily's first pick do i want a robbie first pick um, this is my my debate right now. I'm not exactly thinking of banning anything that he had drafted in the previous round outside of C. Lilius. Uh, I don't think I banned C. Lilius. Uh, or do I? I did, I did. Um, it would be the right draft, like, in my opinion, to ban the C. Lilius unless I had first pick and I'm comfortable driving C. Lilius. Um, but I think, I'd, yeah, I went to choose a Robbie. So without C. Lilius, uh, AOL is banned, uh, it opens up Landy. I don't know if he takes the Landy here or I do, I don't remember this one. But it starts opening up heroes, right? So this is what I mean, oh so Landy is a pretty good option for me right here. Don't know if I go for it though. He goes for the Politis, which is not a really good idea in my opinion. Um, and I think I punish him for this. So again, this goes back to the... I, I think maybe he had been preparing to do a anti-ran option, maybe? But it's not a really good idea to, to do that. Again, like counter-drafting versus expecting what they're going to draft is... Uh, and I don't, I don't like Politis, especially uh, uh, super early. Unless, like I said, you're stealing a Cleaver's picks. He picks the Spectani into the Lionheart, so like the previous fight, um, it is a it is a bad thing to do that. I was thinking about Inferno Kawazu, as you can see, I'm holding it there because what I'm trying to do is trying to trigger the Politus. So I I wanted to trigger the Politus so that I could possibly kill off the the um, LQC, but I realized that he had last pick and SSB was just as strong here, um, or even stronger. He had last pick, so whatever he had to, like a Rowana or a Solitaria to counter the SSB, he couldn't really do it. And then Politus has a 50-50 chance to miss the SSB's immunity if I proc the Astro Guide. So right there, I actually drafted the Aria because I wanted to trigger the Politus. I was thinking about another, like... Maybe like a healer or something like that, but I, I, I opted to do the Aria. My Aria... My Aria build is uh, shown on my my build video. She's pretty scuffed. She has like 2.2k attack, very unoptimized Aria. Um, but I, I do believe that Aria in the right draft does, definitely works. Yeah, and this is pretty good too. And this is why I, uh, I usually recommend people having Aeros fast. Um, you want to get that defense buff up or the option to do an immunity duo attack uh, like early. So I think here it probably was pretty pretty hard. I, I would have like did like maybe hit everything into the A-Ravi there. Um, but the SSB being protected by the a Ros is really strong. He split his damage everywhere um, which wouldn't be an option I would do but uh, it is what it is. Hellcutter stacked 6 with an attack buff, 13,000 HP, it probably did a lot of damage, but my, uh, my a Robbie's not on Proof of Valor, so you can't really kill, with mitigation, you can't really kill a, a Robbie on Proof of Valor, especially with a defense buff, with an LQC. 
So here I'm triggering, I'm gonna trigger the Politus on purpose. Because elemental advantage, so lower damage even if you did hit. And I learned from round one his Politus wasn't uh, wasn't degen. Uh, outside of the Abyssal Crown, but it had the HP was shown, so. My Arya is pretty scuffed though. <laughs> I want to build her well. Um, like I said, Arya now is enabled because I don't pre ban Huayang. And with a knight, she actually has very, very good synergy. Um, like hard to kill, and uh, Aureus will always be affected because uh, the knight would be in stealth. Um, they, of course, the uh, uh, LQC with the Hellcutter stacks still did a lot of damage to the Aria. Now everyone's in stealth, but everyone's still protected, right? So this one's an easy win. So again, it's the drafting, I think, um, he wasn't counter-drafting step-by-step, step, so not procedurally, uh, not procedural drafting, and that's what, uh, that's what caused his, uh, um, as I, when I was drafting, I was drafting accordingly to, when I draft a neutral, like a mitigation or something, it's still a counter-draft to his DPS. Um, but of course, like I make the mistakes of like you know not procedurally drafting, and that's usually when I get punished. If a player is is like let's say equal in terms of draft, then uh, they're gonna win. Um, if you if you start chasing, uh, if you don't counter draft accordingly, you can get punished by the last pick. The other thing is that uh, try not to draft. If you're playing standard, try not to draft three support and end up with two DPS. Unless your support is someone like a Ruel or Maid Chloe that enables your solo DPS to be, or even a Destina, a Reviver or something, enables your solo DPS to have another turn to be able to wipe off the team. There's of course like different situations, but last pick is usually when you would probably introduce a third support. Um, but by slots one to four, you should have at least the rules of two damage dealers and then maybe a mitigation or maybe a support or two support to two damage something like that now i picked a huayang which is really fun as well refreshing that she's not you know pre-banned <laughs> uh like i did for the end of resolution season um now i can use her so it uh it's cool i mean I, she was she was fully built i just didn't use it for the entire season So like I said, Huayang and A. Robbie probably the two strongest carry DPS, um, and that means that they're sort of like they're, they're sort of neutral, um, and uh, they don't have too many flaws, or their strengths cover their flaws. So yeah, Huayang, Huayang with uh, Spect uh, into Specteni, obviously Specteni is very strong versus that. But do keep in mind that he is picking this really early, so now, realistically, if he wants to keep the Spectany in, he needs to have a ton of counters. Like, or sorry, a lot of protection. Um, he chose a, a Rem, which is whatever, like, Huayang can still kill Rems. Um, and, and now I chose a DN. Landy is really good into the Rem, of course, and I'm already thinking about Lionheart Sermia. So now this uh, having one mitigation, one attack buffer, cleanser, healer, it gives me open options of two high damage AOE into this team. So Landy obviously really good into all of the top three. Not so good into slot four right now, but he's behind in terms of the draft. Rem is not an insane counter to Huayang unless she pops off like every single turn. Uh, Milam is obviously the ban, and like I said, if you're drafting properly, you're always aiming to ban last. He had to ban Huayang, because Huayang can kill Alencia, Huayang can kill Milam, which his Spectany draft was, remember, it was drafted because I drafted Huayang. So in terms of the order of the draft, uh, in terms of what he's banning or what he's planning to ban, it's not recommended, like it can work sometimes. But if the opponent you're facing is so good at drafting and counter drafting, you're most likely not banning the first pick or the first four. You're usually banning the last, assuming that they have the proper draft. So that's just something you need to keep in mind when you're drafting, is just to keep in mind of those kind of flaws, right? You want to draft 
counter picks and your ideally your counter picks is not one for one counter you're countering multiple heroes at a time the more heroes you counter with your pick the stronger that single pick is um if you can understand that right here i do a misplay ideally i should have did the defense buff and not the dual attack what i was what i was trying to do there was proc the rem early because you can see my lionheart has the turn right so i should have actually just did the aoe defense buff protect myself even more even though alencia can strip but it had a higher chance to proc rem and counter and then my alencia or my lionheart would have just won that so i actually misplayed even though i had the stronger draft And then uh, in terms of the, in terms of uh, retrospective thinking, he also misplayed. So again, he, he split his damage, but I'm assuming that he thought he could one-shot the Landy from the get-go without attack buff. And uh, now he's going to be a bit punished for that because the Landy now is very, very protected. Um, I didn't Guiding Light after the, the... Oh wait, no, I got stripped. I got stripped by the Alencia, right? That dual attack is both fortunate and unfortunate. Um, we could have kept the uh, the uh, Rem in a kill range uh, easier. But uh, the dual attack is, is okay. It's okay. It did, it did uh, give my Lionheart a bit more survivability. The, the tuning became wrong though, because realistically, the Alencia would have procced the Lionheart now, and if she had did the S1 into Lionheart S2, uh, I do believe that the defense break gets cleansed, but he got a lucky dual attack here. Um, so I took more damage than I wanted, but the dual attack... Like, the dual attack would have been cleansed here, right? So I would have full damage on the S3. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate I procced the Lionheart early because of that stupid dual attack. Rem is popping off now. Uh, it does have attack buff. So there's no way I kill because I got defense break. So that's that's more or less a, an attack down for a defense scaling bruiser. Right here, because I'm still in Guiding Light, so I had to sacrifice her. Um, I could not risk the AoE on Rem. Because right now he has no... He has really no reach for the Landy except this S3. But I have Elemental Advantage, I still have Aureus, and I have a Stealth. So that cuts 50% damage mitigation. But uh, of course, I did get countered when my Lionheart single target hit the uh, Rem. So this was a bit clutch, right? So now I can't risk the Rem counter single target because it would kill my it would kill my uh, DN. And in terms of uh, proc rates, counter proc is still higher than her passive proc. So I had to went to Valencia, got lucky with this one, and this one also ended up very lucky. He had attack buff. If he had did a crushing hit, my Landy would have been dead. So this was a very very close fight, um, kind of a misplay on my part, I should have proc the Lionheart or tried to proc the Lionheart earlier because I don't think I ended up even using the defense buff. After my buffs were stripped, the Aeros could not risk an S3 so I should have S3'd early and that would have made the fight a lot simpler. Yeah, so that would be it for this one. So keep your eyes out on this uh, YouTube channel for future videos like this, where I kind of go through the drafting philosophy. Hopefully this will help you guys for those who are struggling with the drafting. Anyways, I'll end this video here. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.